It has been my privilege and joy to be the rabbi of this congregation these last eight plus years, and we look forward to many other years together. We are... Aw. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Let me tell you why it's Yonina. Yonina has no idea how important they are to our congregation. One of the things that I love to do is I take Israel trips. I'm sure in your congregations you have as well. And in 2017, I was leading a trip of our congregants, and we were going to every mosaic and every synagogue that ever was in the land of Israel, and it was a spectacular experience. And when we got to the north, we stayed at a place you may know called Kibbutz Lavi. Kibbutz Lavi is not paying me for that coverage. <laughs> but we were there for Shabbat. And on Motzei Shabbat, after Havdalah, I was kind of experiencing and enjoying a little bit of downtime in a busy week. And I went wandering the halls of the kibbutz, and I heard a voice like the voice of an angel. I was not expecting it. I had not read the announcements or the schedule. I didn't know anything was happening that night. And it was Nina's voice. And Yoni was playing acoustic underneath her. And this sound was like a siren's call. And I went down the hall in the spirit of Motei Shabbat, that lingering moment between the beauty of rest and the coming of work. And I was transformed with the beauty of this sound and the spirit of it. And our traditional words and views and feelings and beliefs transformed in modern song in a duet of an Orthodox man and woman pouring their hearts and their spirit into the room for the enjoyment, the uplift, and the inspiration of all. As I walked into the back of the room, I saw half of my butts already sitting there. And they were just drinking it up. As I did in the back of the room for the next half hour. I never wrote them, I never called them, they have no idea what an impact they had on me. But I've never forgotten that feeling of the lingering of the joy and the wonder of Shabbat and bringing song into the week. We will bring way. together Jews of various backgrounds, abilities, goals, interests, and we will have common experiences that uplift us and guide us in our path. The day of walls between us is long gone. We are a broad and a deep and a diverse community in America, and we can offer things that we can all touch together, not differently, but in common with different paths and different messages. So tonight, please, as they sing, sing. When you can, clap. Let your body, your mind, your heart, and your soul flow with the sound of people whose spirit and heart of love for each other, our people, our land, and our traditions will bring you beauty in both modern and traditional mode. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to thank those who have made this possible. The Beth Am Fund of B'nai Shalom has contributed generously to allow this to happen as well as Hadassah, the regional chapter, which is housed here in this building, and the Kastner family has helped to underwrite the well as well. People who we already love without knowing them yet. Yonina. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yonina. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jerusalem. I was born in Jerusalem, actually. My parents are from America. That's where my English is from. Right, we were thinking of talking like this, but we were not speaking English so well. Right, so if it, if it wasn't for my parents, it's probably how I'd be speaking to you right now. Um, and Yori uh, is actually born in New York and uh, moved. <laughs> and uh, I made Leon when I was five because I was a big Zionist. And I decided that that's enough, I have to move. So I just did it. But my family took me. <laughs> and I'm happy and grateful for that. But yeah, he also lived in Jerusalem for a lot of years, so uh, we're going to dedicate another song to, to Jerusalem, to Yerushalayim, and you're all invited to sing along with us.
was, well, you know, I was a very big Zionist. I was very active on college campus. I uh, was so passionate about Israel, and during the, the Yom Kippur War, I was out there rallying, and I was so, such a big Zionist. I ended up uh, making Aliyah and moving to Israel. I said, okay, that's a decent answer. And then I asked my mom, and uh, she said, well, you know, I really like the fruits and vegetables. <laughs> So as a kid, I was like, uh, I think I'll go with my dad's answer. It felt a little more heroic and uh, just, I, I related to it a lot more, I understood it a lot more. But I think that as I grow older, I learned to respect more and more uh, my mom's answer. Because uh, really when you think about it, uh, and anybody here who's, who's visited Israel, it really is this, um, this combination of two, of two very different um, experiences. On one hand, it's this uh, kind of like dream come true, this big vision of like uh, our nation returning to its homeland, and it's this, it's this big dream. And on the other hand, it's totally a reality. You know, it's a real place with fruits and vegetables and traffic and people who are both rude and friendly at the same time. And it's, you know, it's a real place. It is real. And, um, and I think that understanding both of those, understanding it's both a dream and a reality at the same time, for me personally, that's uh, that's what makes really my connection to Israel so special. There's 
tell you guys another story, and then it's actually about our second date. Um, so we were, yes, <laughs> we were uh, on our way to a concert. We figured we both like music, so it's a safe bet. And uh, we're driving on the way to the concert, and uh, uh, it's my mom's car, but Yoni's actually the one who's driving. Because I asked my parents if I could take the car, and they, I'm, I'm a terrible driver. So they said, uh, sure, but only if he drives. They've never met me before. <laughs> That's how much they didn't want me driving. So, uh, so we're on the way to the to the concert, and we're driving in the car. And we get there kind of early, and uh, Yoni says, "You know, uh, we're here kind of early. There are there are all these natural springs throughout Israel. You know, it's a thing. People go. You sit next to the spring. You make yourself a little coffee or tea. You sit there. You hang out." So we said, "Let's go to a, a natural spring uh, nearby. We'll sit there, and then we'll go to the concert." So I was like, um, "We start driving. And we get we get close to the spring over there." And then I noticed a lot of mud. So I told Nina, you know, it's your parents' car. I don't feel comfortable going into the mud. And she's like, why? It's fine. It's, it's a Jeep. It's a 4x4. Four four. It's very, it's a great car. So I said, uh, yeah, but I don't want to get it dirty. I mean, I get stuck. She said, no. Come on, let's go. I'm like, no. She's like, yeah, no. So what, are you scared? <laughs> I'm not scared. I go into the mud. I'm cool. So then, uh, <laughs> so driving into the mud, and you know, I, I just, as a few feet pass, I just feel how the car is sinking more and more. Next thing I know, I'm pressing on the gas, I'm not moving. And I look at Nina, and I want to say, I told you so, but it's a second date, so I'm stuck in the mud. So I, uh, I look at her, and I'm thinking, oh, what are we going to do? I'm trying to think how I'm going to get out of this all. And, and she's smiling, look how close we are to the screen, let's just go. Like, what do you mean, let's go with your parents' car, it's stuck in the mud, I'm freaking out. So, so Nina says, you know, this actually reminds me of a story. I'm like, what story are you talking about now? <laughs> it reminded me of a story that has a nigun that goes along with it, a, a tune without words. And uh, the story goes about a group of uh, Hasidim, they were on their way to their rabbi, and uh, they're riding in their wagon, and they're singing, and di 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 and then their wagon gets stuck in the mud, and they start pushing it, and the tune goes, ay, ay, ay. and finally they manage to get their wagon out of the mud, and they get to their rabbi all happy, and they sing, ay, 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 ay. and that's how this is, the tune goes, and that's how the story goes. So I told Yoni, listen, exact same situation, our wagon's stuck in the mud, let's sing the new one. And I was like, she's a little woo, you know, ever seen one. And I started just like yelling it, I'm like, oh, whatever. And all of a sudden, it just bounced out of the mud. I'm like, oh my god. And she starts flying and running after her. And I was like, the week would work. And we go to the concert, full of mud. And that was actually the first time we ever sang together. And you know, Kinda got things rolling. <laughs>
Great to say uh, it wasn't. It was a shidduch um, from the best shadchan that there is, um, which is him <laughs> or she or whatever. Um, and uh, we we really met in Sfat. Uh, I was uh, doing my national service there and uh, living in the old city. And Yoni uh, was spending a Shabbat in Sfat with uh, a group of high school kids. He was their tour guide. He took them to see the view. Um, in the balcony of the place where I was working, because we had this amazing view of looking up at the mountains surrounding Tzvat. So we took them to there, and uh, I was the view. <laughs> but uh, we had a short conversation that's really kind of where everything got started. And uh, when we were engaged, I, uh, I wrote this song, but uh, actually, I didn't really write the song to Yoni. <laughs> I wrote it to something much, uh, much larger, um, much greater, which is uh, to to love to have as an essence, um, as an energy. Because really, if you think about it, it's uh, kind of like the electricity that connects between everything in our world. It's the reason for everything. It's the source for everything. It connects between families and parents and children and us and ourselves and us and Hashem and within our nation and within the world and we need a lot more of it in our world. We need a lot more of uh, So uh, we want to, we want the song to really be a, a prayer, uh, a joint prayer that all the places in the world that are still a little lacking, they're still a little lonely, a little separated, will all be filled with this, uh, this amazing energy.
Thank you.